Hello everybody and welcome to the second in this series on CIE IGCSE Physics Light and Waves. The third, sorry, the third. Now today we're going to be looking at refractions. I'm going to start with a health warning. This is considerably more difficult than the first two lectures that you've had online. So for this one you will almost certainly need to pause it and rewind at certain points, go back and check that you've understood things fully. You will also need to make a list of things that don't totally make sense the first time and bring them to me in the lesson. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you do that. If you don't do that, you're really going to struggle to understand this content. So with that said, let's begin. Um, the idea of this is to advance your understanding of refraction, including some of the mathematics of it. And there are quite a few formulas here, so I suggest that you write them down as we go. Again, pause the video when you need to. Um, you should be able to, by the end of today, define refraction and this idea of refractive index. You're going to use a new law that we're going to introduce called Snell's Law, and we're going to look at how the velocity of light affects refractive index. You can see a cool picture here. This is an example of refraction in action. Um, you can see that this person's head appears to be in a completely different place to his body. Give you a hint, it's because the body is being seen through water while the face is being seen through air. I wonder if you could maybe by the end of this lecture tell me why that is. So what is actually refraction? I've got a little uh, animation here of what happens if I shine a light from air into glass. Um, it doesn't have to be glass, it can actually be any material. What we find, and you're going to be doing this in the lesson, is that when it's going straight in like it is now, uh, it goes in a straight line, it goes from air into glass. But as I change the angle of incidence, remember from last lesson, that's the angle between the normal and the line, and the instant ray, what I find is that this other ray in here, which I'm going to call the refracted ray, that no longer has the same angle between it. The two angles become different. Um, and that's quite perplexing at first. Think, well, why would it be different? Um, but we can actually describe it in quite a cool way. The way to imagine it, I want you to think about a car. When you think about a car driving from asphalt, so a normal road, onto really deep sand. So what I want you to do is get your two fingers like this, hold them apart, and I want you to pretend that your top finger is one side of the car, so one tyre, and your bottom finger is the other tyre. And actually put your fingers on top of car one. So car one's driving along the road and it hits the sand. So put your fingers over car one and just move them in the direction that the car one was travelling towards the sand. What do you notice? Well, what you notice is, as it gets to the sand, your top finger, the finger closest to the sand, hits the sand first. Now, what does that mean? Well, you should think about it. Think about when the tyres hit the, the sand, they're going to be slowed down because sand is going to grip onto the tyre and slow it down. But the other side of the car is still travelling really, really fast. So what happens is the car gets a little knock, the car gets bent because one side travels more slowly than the other side, and the car changes direction. That was a key theory of what calls refraction for a number of years, and we've actually now been able to prove that um, pretty accurately. That is what happens. Light slows down in anything that isn't air. So glass, light actually travels more slowly in glass than it does in air. And whenever you're trying to work out which way light is going to bend, I want you to use this finger technique. Put one finger over here, one finger over there, and then you can see when it gets to here, yeah, this finger will be slow, this finger will be fast, so we get a kind of bend in that direction, because this fast one will travel a little bit more, while this slow one's travelling more slowly. But then it will carry on in a strange direction, because here, the two fingers are both on the sand, so they're both travelling at the same speed. So that kind of explains to us why light bends when it goes from one thing into another. Yeah, it's the idea that it's fast in one medium and slow in something else. Um, now, this is where we need to introduce a new concept to you, and that is the idea of refractive index. So a refractive index is a ratio of the angles of incidence and angles of refraction. 
So we define that by a formula here, n, which is the refractive index. And then sin i, which is the angle of incidence. I'm here I'm using a little uh, triangle symbol, that means angle. Sine r is the angle of refraction. Uh, quite important to know the units here. Um, the angle of incidence is measured in degrees, so is the angle of refraction. Refractive index has no units at all. There's a good reason for that, but I'm not going to go into it now. Um, so this is where we come into this idea of Snell's law. This is what we call it. Snell's law is pretty simple. It tells us that n, the refractive index, is equal to sine i over sine r. And it's a measure of how much the material slows down light. Because it's a measure of how much material slows down light, I've got another equation for you. And that is C over Cm. What does that mean? Well, C is the speed of the light in a vacuum, or air, because it's pretty much the same thing. Cm is the speed of light in the medium. And for glass, it travels at about half the speed. So by using that, what you're going to find is that n will always come out as a number um, bigger than 1. It should always be bigger than 1. If you ever get n as something smaller than 1, something's gone a little bit wrong. Um, now we're going to do loads of practice of that in the lesson. For now, you just need to be able to use these two equations um, and say, so if I said that uh, C is always, by the way, uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Um, but if I said, say, uh, uh, C of glass was 1.5 times 10 to the 8, I might ask you, could you find me N where, sorry, uh, yeah, could you find me N, first of all? And then I might say, what is the angle of refraction if the angle of uh, incidence is 10 degrees? Uh, and I won't do that now, we'll do that in the lesson, but maybe have a, as part of this uh, video, you can have a go at that and see if you can solve it. So this thing will all keep happening as you increase the angle of incidence. And again, in the lesson, I'm going to give you these uh, semicircular glass blocks. Now, why are we going to give you semicircular glass blocks? We're going to use them um, because any angle of incidence, as long as it's uh, aimed at the middle, will always travel along the normal. So it will have zero refraction as it enters. What does that mean? Um, so here's a glass block. So this is the glass block here, the semicircular thing. Um, so here's glass and around it is air. Now what I'm saying is, why is it semicircular? It's because, if you think about light coming in here, the normal goes exactly along it. And I said earlier, that if light enters the glass block along its normal, there's no bending, there's no refraction. So I don't have to worry about refraction here. I only have to worry about what's going on here. So, we get refraction as we'd expect. Um, this is the angle of uh, refraction. This is the angle of incidence, and we get it as normal. But eventually we're going to get a point where my angle of refraction is so big that my angle of incidence becomes 90 degrees. And it goes straight along the block. Well, when that happens, the next thing we find happening is that the light we would expect to refract like this, but it doesn't. Instead, it kind of flicks and appears in this direction instead. Um, for reasons that will become clear later, um, we always have to have light going from inside the block to outside for this to work. So, this point here is called the critical angle. If you go past the critical angle, what you find is this idea of total internal reflection. Um, now, why is that? Well, total internal reflection occurs when we try to go past an emergent, we could call this the emergent or the incident ray. Um, the key thing is that, like I said in this box, it's always that the refracted ray is the ray that's inside the glass. And that can be a little bit confusing because obviously we can think of the light that's coming in from this way, so you might think of it as incident. The way to remember it is that refracted ray is always inside the glass. Uh, instant ray is always outside. Um, we'll fix that at A level. Um, but we're talking about uh, 
this, this angle. So what happens is when this incident ray here tries to be 90 degrees. Well, if I try to go more than that, um, so more than 90 degrees and light's coming down like that, and then the law of reflection says, well, that can't happen. Instead, it has to reflect like that. Um, and again, I'll explain that a little bit more in the lesson and we'll do some uh, practice with it. And when we have done some practice, maybe come back to this video and look at it again. Um, but going back to our original equation, um, if we remember that n is equal to sine i over sine r, well, uh, the Chetland Tunnel reflection starts to happen when sine i is a trying to be 90 degrees. Now, I happen to know that sine of 90 degrees, bang it into a calculator, you'll find is 1. So, m is equal to 1 divided by sine of the critical angle. So this is c. So, what does this mean? The critical angle is the angle where we go from getting refraction happening to getting reflection happening. Go back to these video to these images. Okay, so this is what happens when the angle of incidence is big, sorry, smaller than the angle of the critical angle. This is what happens when the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle. And this is what happens when the angle of incidence becomes bigger than the critical angle. So we get this idea that as I increase my angle of incidence, I get refraction happening, refraction happening, and suddenly it flicks, and I get reflection happening against the inside of the glass. Like I say, it's okay if you're not completely with me at this point. We'll go into this in loads of detail shortly. But this is the key equation that I want you to write down for now. So, in summary, refraction happens because light changes speed as it goes from one thing to another. The amount of refraction that we get is determined by the refractive index n. The bigger n is, the more refraction that we get. We have two equations that you need to know. That is n is equal to sine of the incident angle divided by sine of the refractive angle, and n is also equal to the speed of light in an air or a vacuum, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, divided by the speed of light in whichever material light is travelling through. Those ends are the same for a material, always the same. Total internal reflection happens when light, leech, when light tries to leave a material uh, and tries to refract so much that it would stay inside the object it's leaving. Um, it happens uh, beyond, I should say, the critical angle C. And that's the last equation. What is this critical angle? It's 1 divided by, sorry, sine of the critical angle is 1 divided by m. For now, all I need you to be able to do is know those equations and roughly be able to apply them. When we do some work in the lessons, it'll hopefully make a bit more sense. But I fully expect you to come with a big sheet of questions. What I don't want is you to come in and say, I don't understand anything. It's, it's fine if you found this difficult. That's okay. But... Do come to me with a list of specific questions that you'd like me to go through, um, bits of the video that you found difficult, bits you didn't quite understand, and I'll explain them to you in our lesson. Thank you very much for watching, um, and I will see you in our lesson.